Turn with me, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and the way we've been going is this, but the manifestation of the Spirit, it's given to every man to profit with all. There is profit when the Holy Spirit is allowed to manifest. Yeah. Amen. And every man who will cooperate with that manifestation will profit. Amen. 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 Every man who will not cooperate will have to bypass and forfeit the profit that could have been his. But notice this, God's mind for all of his people is to profit, yeah. increase. Amen. Have something you did not have before. Amen. That's what profit is. Amen. It is something that comes into yeah. your, your possession Amen. that you did not have before. Amen. That's increase, Amen. profit. Amen. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another diverse kinds of tongue, to another the interpretation of tongues. God said to Dad Hagen, the spirit of seeing and knowing will be in, great, in manifestation in a greater measure than you've ever seen before. When God says that, he's showing his will. Amen. Yeah. Amen. That's his plan. Yes. Amen. Now, for his plan to come to pass, somebody has to hook on and say, yes, I'll respond yeah. to that. Amen. That's right. That's right. So when God is saying that the spirit of seeing and knowing will be in greater manifestation than ever before, he's talking about the spirit of seeing and knowing is involving the word of knowledge and the word of wisdom. Amen. The word of wisdom is a revealing of the future. The word of knowledge is a revealing of the past or present circumstances that you had no way of knowing unless the Spirit revealed it to That's you. Right. Amen. Amen. So when something is revealed and it's uh, and God shows you that that is a flowing of the spirit of what God had said to Dad Hagen called it the spirit, the spirit of seeing and knowing. Remember when Jesus would go out and minister among the people, he would say, I only do what I see my father do. I only say what I hear my father say. So when he saw, now he knew what to do. That's right. Amen. Can I say this? How do we operate? Now, we were talking about, and we made this statement last night, I believe, that the fivefold ministry offices will have a more, they will have a more ongoing and stronger degree of these nine manifestations of the Spirit operating. And those are for public use. And they're never for the minister. They're always for someone else in that yeah, that's setting. Right. Yeah, that's right. But every believer can have a degree yeah. of some measure yeah. of any of these gifts as the Spirit wills and as it's needed. Right. Amen. Amen. Now, you might have at times a gift of healing going to operation. Or you might have a word of knowledge going to operation. But with fivefold offices, like certain offices, they will, like a, an evangelist, he'll always have the gifts of healing. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah. Always. Maybe not in every service, but I'm saying that's prevalent in his ministry. Now you might just have, you might go for a period of time and just have one and just have another. But I'm just saying they're for you. They're for every man to profit. Now the way to move into these is the more we speak in other tongues, the more we become sensitive when the Spirit is endeavoring to bring one of these manifestations into our lives. Amen. So the more we pray in other tongues, the more sensitive our spirits become. Amen. So uh, I want to, again, as we said uh, the other night, there are the nine manifestations of the Spirit fall into three categories. There's the power gifts the revelation gifts, or the inspirational utterance vocal gifts. 
So the power gifts do something. The, gift of the gifts of healing, working of miracles, gift of faith, the revelation gifts reveal something. Word of wisdom, word of knowledge, discerning of spirits, the inspirational gifts say something. Tongues, interpretation of tongues and prophecy. Uh, so Jesus would come out and he would say, I only do what I see my Father do. In other words, uh, prayers, because he would pray, uh -huh. and in the time of prayer, he would see. Yeah. Prayers get previews. Amen. That's good. That's it. He will show you a preview of what's to happen throughout that day. Amen. Amen. So the more we pray, the more we will see previews of things. And sometimes the seeing, when it's, it's not always seeing, sometimes it's just a knowing. Yes. That you just have a sense that God is wanting to do. Now I'm talking about for a minister. You have a sense in a service God is wanting to do something. Whether it's minister to a certain person or have a certain flow. You have a sense that he's wanting to do something. The spirit of singing. You just know. You just know. You, don't, you didn't hear a word. You didn't hear a voice. You didn't hear an articulation even in your spirit. You just have a sense. I know that this needs to happen in the service. You can have that same thing in your daily life. I just know I need to start this business. I didn't have God say, I just know I need to do it. Or I know I need to take this job. Or I know I shouldn't take this job. I don't have, I just have a knowing. Amen. Spirit of seeing and knowing Amen. going into operation. Yes. Amen. 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 Praise the Lord. So when we look to scripture, where do we see the spirit of knowing, spirit of seeing and knowing go into operation and what it can work? A word of knowledge from, from, um, from Elisha warned a king of the enemy's war plan of destruction. Remember when uh, the king of Syria was going to come against God's people, the Israeli army. Yeah. And when the king would give the battle plan, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and he would do it in his, no doubt, his bedchamber. I would say it's probably a tent on the battlefield or something. Right. He's not calling people into his bedroom right. in his palace. Right. Right. He's, he's getting ready for war, so he's yeah. got a place where he sleeps set up and he calls his military leaders yeah. in, in his bedchamber, so to speak. Yeah. And he starts laying out yeah. Yeah. the battle plan of attack. Yeah. But Elisha knows it. Yeah. 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 And goes to the king of Israel and say, don't go over there. They're over there waiting for you. Yeah. Amen. And so that plan oh, folds. Yeah. Yeah. And then so he creates, the king of Seir creates another plan. And the spirit of seeing and knowing, a word of knowledge, goes into operation. Yeah. Yeah. And reveals it a second time. And finally the king of Seir said, who's the traitor on our, in our troops? Who's the traitor? And one says, there's no one a traitor. There's a prophet in Israel. Yeah. Yeah. That he says in the king's ear what you say in your bedchamber. <laughs> you say, oh, I like the spirit of seeing and knowing until. <laughs> and so the king of Syria sends a troop. He sends his military. We got, before we can defeat the Israeli army, we got to get rid of this guy. So they, in the nighttime, they surround where Elisha is. And Elisha's servant walks out and goes, hubba, 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 hubba. Because all he sees is the troops of enemy armies against him. And what did Elisha, Elisha wasn't troubled. He said, oh, God, open his eyes. In other words, may he see what I see. When you see what God shows, yeah. you are so unafraid and uninterested in what the devil is showing. And what he saw was legions of heavenly hosts surrounding him to where no natural military force could break through and touch him. When you are operating under the spirit of seeing and knowing, the devil, you can't touch this. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. 
Amen. The spirit of seeing and knowing rescued a nation. Now, if it'll rescue a nation, won't it rescue your marriage? Won't it rescue your children? Won't it rescue anything of less precedence there? Amen. 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 Then what about this? The word of knowledge, the spirit of seeing and knowing, going into operation to enlighten and, and, and encourage a discouraged servant, Elijah. Jezebel's after him. I finally learned who Jezebel was. <laughs> Elijah's running from a woman who hates that he is God's spokesman. And Elijah makes this unknowledgeable statement. He says, I'm the only one left. I'm the only one left standing up and declaring what you say. I'm it. What was, what was the problem? He lacked the knowing. And God said, there are 7,000 who have not bowed their knee to Baal. Yeah. Yeah. Now when he knew, then he could no longer be afraid and discouraged. Yeah. God encouraged him with what the knowledge he brought him into. That's right. When you have the spirit of seeing and knowing, it will encourage you at a time when you feel like quitting. And when circumstances threaten you. Amen. Amen. Then we see the word of knowledge go into operation to expose a hypocrite with Gehazi. Gehazi was used by God in different occurrences of miracles. Pastor Debbie talked about it. When, uh, or was it Pastor Debbie or Pastor Craig? One of you talked about it when, uh, no, it was, it was Pastor Chris Cody in your sermon on the, the offering. And you were talking about that the, the woman had taken care of the man of God. And, and the prophet said, I must do something for her. And Gehazi was the one who had the answer in his mouth. And said, uh, she has no child. That was the answer the prophet was looking for. But yet the same man who was the answer to the prophet's request became a hypocrite. And a thief. You can be around the mighty men of God, but if you don't keep this inside clean... Amen. Your proximity to a man of God is not automatic success. Amen. That's right. You have to do the right Amen. thing when you're around the right man. Amen. Amen. And uh, a word of knowledge exposed a hypocrite. Now, know this. God will give, now I'm going to talk to ministers but, you know, I, this also applies to parents. God will expose someone that would jeopardize your children and your family. He'll expose them to you. Not so you can go out and tell it and broadcast it, but so you can pull yours away from that. It's not, I, you have to know this. If God warns you about somebody, that's not for you to go out and warn everybody in the church about them. Because everybody else has the same Holy Spirit and it's up to them to hear. You'll get in trouble with God if you go out and broadcast something the Spirit said to protect your family and you go tell other people the same thing God said. You better be careful because you're not the Holy Ghost. And that's His job. And if people won't pay attention to Him enough and be sensitive enough, you can't rescue when the Holy, when the Holy Ghost can't even rescue the others that won't listen. Amen. Anyway, God will minister a word of knowledge to help restore someone who's doing wrong if they want help. I was preaching one time, we were in the tent, and I was preaching a wonderful, just a friendly faith sermon. <laughs> friendly to hear. <laughs> and uh, right in the middle of it, you know, it comes out your mouth before you even really realize what's coming out. And I said, that man... Uh, Friday night, now see this is Sunday morning, that man Friday night who was in such and such hotel in such and such a room number with somebody who's not your wife, you think you got by with it, God was there, he saw it. Hello. <laughs> was I trying to hurt somebody? No. Uh, they had thought they had pulled a really good one. And I sat down after it and I said, 
Is there such a hotel like that? I gave the name of a hotel. Is there a hotel like that in this scene? They, and, and one of the staff said, they just finished building it last month. I said, oh, thank God. Yeah. <laughs> what was it? God is trying to help. Exp yeah. He's trying. Yeah. He's not exposing him to make him fail. He's trying to offer help to someone if they'll take it. Yeah. Amen. 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 Now, can I tell you this? If a lot of times, if God takes it public in a sense like that, it's because you have refused to listen privately and in his last ditch effort, he will go public. That's right. But it's a last ditch effort. Amen. Amen. Plus, when you say something like that, other would be offenders straighten up. Yeah. <laughs> what a help that is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God will reveal things not to hurt people. Never. It's always, always for their help. And when God reveals it, don't you ever step back from helping them with what God revealed if God tells you to. Because if you don't, there may not be another help that comes. There uh, have been times that I have walked into churches and you look up on the platform and you go, oh. And you go, I don't want to look up there anymore. Because when you look, when you see, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> I was thinking I was uh, in, a, in one particular church in California. And I looked up on the platform. I was doing several services there. I looked up on the platform. And as soon as my, I laid eyes on one of the, the girls in the music team, God said, lesbianism. Yeah. And I go, you know, one of my business. I'm not a pastor here, you know. <laughs> But see, what is it? Uh, when we hear that, we think, well, God's trying to go after somebody. God is trying to go after someone to help them, to help them. So I didn't do anything about it. See, you have to be under the anointing to do something about it. Just because you know it doesn't mean the anointing's on you to do something about it. So I didn't touch it yet. I just, all right. And so every time you look up there, there's that word. Every time, every time. What is that? The spirit of seeing and knowing. And so uh, I think I did like three services and I am closing out the very last service. And right before I closed it out, the anointing came on me and God said, deal with that. And the flesh, just because it's something of that nature, of confrontational nature, we have to renew our minds. This is not negative. It's a renewed mind. You have to have God's thinking on it. God sees their need. Yeah. 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 Amen. God loves them. Yeah. Now, God can't make them accept hell, but he will certainly offer it. And he will offer it and offer it and offer it. But if they keep rejecting it, there'll come a time he'll, he'll quit offering it. Yeah. 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 So... Good. so when that anointing came on me, the seat, now I'm not wanting, I don't know what the pastor knows. I don't know who knows. I don't know who, what family members are in there. I'm not trying to ruin someone's future by getting the people talking against somebody. You know, because there are a lot of carnal people that when somebody is looking and needing help, they won't let them get free from that association, oh, I saw you, you know, and they, they, won't, they won't forget it next week and next month. So we, we have to handle these things in wisdom. So I didn't want to single this person out so that others could take a wrong attitude toward them. Why? Because that's not why God's bringing this. He's wanting to help them. So I said this. I gave a call that God, because I, I asked God, I said, tell me how to do this. So God, in his wisdom, tells me what to do. And he said, and he throws in other things. His target isn't all those things. His target is that one. But just so that the one doesn't become spotlighted in the wrong way. So I said, anybody bound by a bad habit, addiction, or perversion. It could be smoking. It could be drugs. It could be alcohol. It could be porno. It could be illicit sex. It could be homosexuality. It could be lesbianism. It could just be a bad habit 
that, I mean, you just can't seem to get on the other side of. See what you've done. You've softened the territory there. And I said, if you fall into any of those categories, listen, we all have habits we need to get past, but if there's one you're needing help on, God wants to help you. So I said, come up here. And so people came up and God blessed them. I ministered to them. People were touched by the power of God, but God, they really got an overflow of what God was, who God was targeting, but he was blessing the whole just so he could reach the one. But this person didn't come up. See, God gave him an opportunity. See, remember what I said, a gift of the Spirit will go into operation if they want the help. So I said, God, we offered nicely, didn't we? He said, yes. And I said, can I please sit down? (laughs) No, got it. He, he still wants, so so this is what I did. While everybody else is doing something, I just came over. I'll come over because then Sister Amy won't get, Pastor Amy won't get it. Uh, and I said, come here, love, come here. So she gets it. You don't have to. But I just pulled her up and I said, come here. And I said, do you know why I'm pulling you out? She said, yes, ma'am. I said, do you want to be free? Yes, ma'am. See, sometimes some people are too embarrassed. They're shy for whatever reason. They won't step up. See? So I, I didn't say, you been there, you know. Why? Because God's not trying to embarrass, torment her. Don't misunderstand me. Sometimes he has had me to call people out in front of a congregation and call it out as it was. Why? Because they are, they are conducting something in a public eye to where other congregation members know and they're affecting others and they need to be marked as what they're doing is wrong. So don't you accept what they're doing? That's right. Amen. God was trying to protect others. If, if God has you to, in a very direct confrontational way, nail, you know what I'm talking about, call it out publicly in a very clear way, it's not because of them. He's trying to warn the others they're affecting. Does that make sense to you? Otherwise, it gets handled in a cloaked, softened manner like I did. Now, when there is a gift of the Spirit like that that goes into operation, uh, God's trying to keep the church healthy. If you don't deal with that stuff, that stuff will spread. You have to learn this. The Spirit of the world will try to get into the church. And if you don't deal with, when you know someone is informed, And they still choose the wrong thing. And I'm talking about over a period of time. They will open a door on that fam, on that congregation family. And if the pastor won't deal with it, they will answer to God for it. I am not, there is nowhere in my personality, I am not a confrontational person. Now, Ed, in his personality, he was confrontational. And I used to sit back and enjoy his confrontations. Because I was so impressed by somebody who just didn't even flinch. Because, man, I was flinching, you know. You say, well, you sound bold. Well, yeah, under the anointing, we all sound bold. But I will say this. The way I sound under the anointing, I walk out out from under the anointing. You want to know why? Because I don't pastor or minister by personality. And my personality is not a confrontational bend. But to pastor, you have to confront. So I put my personality under the word. I pastor on the word, not based on personality. Do I confront? You got your business right. I will confront you. Is it in my personality? No, I do it because of the word and the spirit directs me to. Because I don't pastor it based on my personality. My personality colors my pastorate. It colors me in the ministry, but it's not leading me. You have to know that. 
because there are a lot of pastors that have lost their congregations because they try to pastor all their personality and then their personality is not all that's needed to lead. I pastor based on the word. I don't pastor based on my personality. I've kicked people out of the church. I have confronted perversion. I have called, I'll call it in and I'll call it straight because I'm not playing. Anybody, anybody that comes and attends this church can leave any time they want. I can't. I can't. None of my family can leave any time they want, but every person who comes as a sheep to the church, they can pick up and leave any time they want. We can't. And I'm not going to let someone who can exit ruin the place I have to stay. And I'm not trying to be mean. I'm trying to let you know I don't pastor by my personality. I don't lead this ministry by my personality. And the staff knows you get, li- you get out of line, I'm all over you. Yeah. You're not hurting this ministry. Amen. My husband paid a dear price yeah. for the ground he laid. Yeah. My family, we paid a price in yeah. being faithful. And I'm not going to let one little perversion yeah. come up and wreck and jeopardize the whole thing. Yeah. Ain't happening. And people do not come and bring their family and bring their children for somebody to diddle the, one of their children out in the hallway. Not happening. Not happening. Not happening. We are not a reform center. We are a transform center. And if you won't transform, if you refuse the transformation process, I don't have a, re- a, a reform process for you. You understand that? When baby Christians and young people come in, I tell you what, I will work with them. I will be patient with them because I understand the level they're at. But when you're at a big boy level and you're at a big girl level and you start trying to mess with my church, oh, you just, you just got the ugliest, meanest woman on the planet. <laughs> because I am jealous for the plan of God. I am jealous for what God is doing. And I tell you, I'm not handing the plan of God off to someone who won't live clean. That's not happening. I'm not handing the vision of this church off to somebody who is living unconsecrated. Not happening. Not happening. Amen. And I'll talk to you and I'll work with you, but I'm not playing games. I guarantee you, you might manipulate your mom and your daddy and your wife and your husband, but there's no manipulation going on here. Amen. You're not playing games with me because I'm not playing games with my future. And when the Spirit of God says to deal with you, I guarantee you, I'm backed up with His power to deal with you. And I will deal. Let me tell you, I'm a lady, but this lady carry a big stick right back here. (laughs) You want to know why? It keeps the family safe. You're not going to hurt this church family. Now let me go a little bit further. Oh, I got loads of time. Uh, There have been times, everyone that walks into the church, I do not have to pastor. That's right. That's right. 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 I don't have to. I don't have to. Amen. There have been times in pastoring, and I will say this, it's not often. It's not frequent. There have been times that when somebody walks in, I'm, tell, I'm, tell, I'm talking about somebody I've never seen before, never laid eyes on, they've never visited, they've never been part of this church, and I see them and I have a warning sign that goes up. Right. When that happens, I know that God, if it's just a warning, I know that God is giving them a chance to, to get their lives right. Yes. But I know this, they're unclean. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. So I put an usher on them. I don't tell them. But I'll call an usher and I say, you you, you sit near that person. Your assignment is if they get up and go to the bathroom, you need to go too. You're not going to stand right by them. You're not going to say anything. You're just going to follow them because you don't know that they're going to get up and walk. See, the devil will use their, 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 their problems in their life to go out. And, and pollute somebody else, get a kid in the hole. No, yeah. That's not happening here. I'm not stupid. I'm not stupid. And not, I'm not playing stupid. Listen, I was that way with my kids. I'm that way with the church. I pastor the way I parent. 
Because the pastor's a parent. Amen. So that that person will have an usher put on them until I sense not to. But I have found this out. When that alarm comes, most of the time, 99% of the time, they don't last two or three weeks. Because the word puts a demand. You either, you either make a choice to be right or not be right. And the anointing in this place won't let you play. He'll let you get help. But he's not letting you play. Now, then there have been a few times when it wasn't just a warning, it was a, like an alarm. When they walked in, when I have that, they're not allowed in the building. I'm telling people I've never seen before. I'll be there in praise and worship, and somebody will walk in the back door, and that alarm goes off. And I go, hmm, let them keep singing. And I'll walk back there, person I've never seen before, and say, I know you're looking for a church. I know you're looking for a pastor, but this isn't it. And I don't want to waste your time trying to stay here thinking and checking to see if this is it because I'm just telling you, I want to help you find your pastor. I'm not it. Amen. Praise so you need to go find your pastor. That's right. Why? Because I know that they don't want help. They're coming here with motives of whether they're going to try to get somebody. They want an illicit affair. They want to pill for money out of somebody. I'm not playing games. Thank you. Praise That's why I've never had, we've never had a church split in almost 30 years now. And we never will. Why? Because the spirit of seeing and knowing will push it to the top. But know this. When he pushes it to the top, you better be, have the boldness to skim it off. That's my job. I'm a skimmer. Just take that arm and just skim it off. People, people in the world, you know, they get this mentality. They'll go from church to church to church to church to try to peel for money out of people. And then they'll look for ways to try to sue. And that person, a person tried to do that one time and I got wind of it. And uh, so I would, uh, I called the person, uh, you know, on their phone. They didn't answer. I left a message and I said, this is Pastor Nancy. Now, see, they had been here for a while. We had given them the opportunity to be right. They didn't want to be right. They wanted to work their system. Yeah, see, the spirit of seeing and knowing will reveal a hypocrite. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I gave him, I, I called him and I left a message and I said, this is Pastor Nancy. I said, I'm trying to reach you. And I said, I need to talk to you. That means do not attend one of my services till you've come to the office and met with me. Amen. And so I called and left several messages so they couldn't say one got erased and they didn't know. I did that. Well, about two weeks later, I look out and there they are. And I go, oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. Oh, no, you didn't. I'm in the middle of the sermon because, see, I look at people and I, I never see them when I'm preaching. I guarantee you. I, 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 it's not probably a good habit, but I can look right at somebody the whole service and never know they were there. Because I'm not trying. Yeah, I'm not preaching to people. In the sense of singling someone out and making them my target. But for some reason, I looked out and there, there, there they were. And I go, everybody raise their hands and praise the Lord real loud. <laughs> real loud. Real loud. <laughs> Usher, come here. Yep. Come here with me. Yeah. Come here with me. I mean, I get a glazed over look, you know, like, oh, no, you didn't. <laughs> and I went back and I said, honey, I, got, I gave you a message that you don't come back into this church unless you meet with me. This usher's going to take you to my office right now, That's right great. now. That's he will great. hold you there till I'm ready to That's talk great. to you. <laughs> Everybody in God good. <laughs> in the service. Oh, praise the Lord. Right. What is this? The spirit of singing, knowing. I know what you got. I know. I know the hypocrite. I know what you're trying to do against this congregation. I know you're using the opportunity to look for, get you some easy money. Not here. We're not stupid. We're not suckers. We have a divine genius helping us. And I and don't you, don't you dare call it mercy. Don't you dare call the, the call the negligence to follow the Holy Ghost mercy. 
Mercy is not permissive towards wrongdoing. Amen. Are you kidding me? Amen. 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 Come on. And so then after the service, I went and took me two ushers, ugly ones. <laughs> Biggest heels. <laughs> and I said, I told you, and I know what you're doing. And I was very plain about it. And I said, the next time, they're going to escort you off the property. And the next time you show up, police will be here to meet you. And don't you doubt it, I'm not playing. That's right. See, I don't have those problems. Why? Skim it off. Skim it off. If, it won't do you any good to see it and know it if you won't skim it off. Yes, ma'am. Amen. 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 That's why, that's why Brother Copeland comes here and says, I want to come back. That's why anybody bound can come here and get free. Anybody, anybody. They are so welcome to come here and get free, but we're not playing games. And I will even let someone unknowledgeable play a game for a little bit, but see, I, I, I know the game better than them. So I know when they've stepped over the line. I'm going to give you a chance to get right. I'm going to give you a chance to get the word in you because I know it doesn't happen in a day. I know it doesn't happen in a week. I know it doesn't happen in six weeks. I understand, but we're not playing games and the Holy Ghost will keep us on the, in the know of someone's intent and someone's motive. Why? Because we're trying to help them. That's right. But if you don't want help, you're not going to, you're not going to affect our, our people negatively playing your game. Amen. No, 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 no. Amen. They don't come here so that you can pill for money off them and work your business deal and sell your items back at, no, 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 no. That, so you can get your business from, my, don't, don't you dare come in here and put a business card on the seat. Oh my Jesus. Somebody walked in and did that one time and I walked out and there's a business card on every seat. I go, oh geez, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You know how Ed would talk about, don't you come here and try to sell your soaps and all your bubbles and your gizzard cleaners. Why? The anointing is a people gatherer, but not so you can make money. Oh, no. See, I'm jealous for the plan of God. I am jealous. So I, I, I picked up one of those cards. I picked up one of them and I said, ushers, you get all those cards off the chairs and I don't know who got one or not. So I said, okay, I'm not even asking who this is. I know you're here. I'm not even asking. Don't, don't stand up. Don't, don't stand up. And I said, you see this card, people? If you ever saw this card, don't you frequent this business. These people came in here and they tried to use the anointing so they could promote their business. Don't you dare, patron, don't you dare be a patronage to their business. Don't, don't you dare. And people go, okay, Pastor. Thank you, Pastor. You know. Because they, they're, they're companies that teach people, go do that. You see, I'm jealous for God's house and what God does. Amen. Amen. Am I confrontational? Yes, not in my personality, but in my authority. But I'm kind. I'm kind. I am kind. I am kind. <laughs> the gifts of the Spirit are not only suggested, they're mandatory to have a clean church. Yeah. Now, now let me tell you something. As the pastor, it's not my job to clean up people. Yeah. Amen. That's right. Not my job. Yeah, that's right. Not my job to run around and, and find people and what you're doing in sin and confront you. No, I don't do that. That's the job of the Holy Ghost. But if you won't listen to him, yeah. I can't help you. That's right. Amen. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's a good word. It's not, you understand, it's not my job to get in the business of the people right. and say, I know you're doing this and I know Come you're on. doing that. No, I do it by the Holy by Ghost. The Holy I've Holy always Holy pastored Holy by the Spirit. Amen. Amen. It's not my job. I'm not going to step in and solve your problems in your life. That's what the Holy Ghost yes. is for. Yes. My job is to teach you how to follow the one who helps you. Yes. Teach you the Word. Teach you how the Spirit's going to help you teach you, give you the, the tools to renew your mind. That's my job. My job is not to get in your business and fix your business. I tell my staff, I will not deal with heart issues. I 
only deal with job performance issues with staff. That's it, period. If you got a heart issue, if you got an attitude problem, you better get it right in the congregation, in the services, just like every other congregation member. It is not my job to deal with your heart on staff. It is my job to deal with job performance. You deal with your heart like every other congregation member. Amen. Amen. It's not my job to get all up in your business. I'm not the Holy Ghost to you. Amen. Y'all gonna wear me out. Amen. <laughs> the gifts of the Spirit are the, the pastor's greatest aid Amen. to help him pastor. It's the minister's greatest help to help the people. Not by might, not by power, but by the Spirit. But when the Spirit says something, you have to have the boldness to follow him in what he says. He's always right. He's always right. He's always right. And when you sense something is off with someone and they'll swear to you with their last breath that that's not, the Holy Ghost is always right. And when your children say, no, mama, I'm not doing anything wrong, but on the inside, the Holy Ghost is right. Amen. Yes, he is. My children, they do so wonderful. Your children ain't perfect. And when you start thinking they are, you're going to get duped. You better listen to the Holy Ghost. You better listen to the Holy Ghost. He loves your children more than you do. He loves your family more than you do. Amen. 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 My husband, just to tell you, uh, years ago, he was in a foreign country, and he started having heart issues. Now, this was before him and I married, and uh, he uh, went home and went to the doctor and had it checked out, and they did uh, where they shoot, what, the ink or the dye up into arteries. In the arteries to see the condition of them. There was nothing wrong. And then when he got in the hospital, all that stopped. And he said to God, he said, what was that? He said, uh, you were too busy to listen to me. So I'm going to let you stay here so you can listen to me. He'll, you know, if you won't slow down on purpose, he'll have to use something else that will slow you down so you can listen. And he said, well, why did I have those symptoms? He said, I told you about a situation in your family that was going on and you wouldn't believe me because you wanted to believe the best about them. That's not walking in love, believing the best about somebody against what the Holy Ghost said. That's not walking in love. How about walking in love with the Holy Ghost first? He said, I told you something about somebody and you would not believe me and deal with it. And that's why you're having heart problems. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Dr. Summerall told the story about when he invited William Branham to his church. And the first night, William Branham had the word of knowledge, word of wisdom, in a measure that I don't know that we've ever seen. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, he could get up, he could tell you what was, what was wrong with you, he could tell you all kinds of things about every person that stood in front of him. What is that? That's a greater measure of that gift. Yes. And see, in, the, in the, this, this revival, God said 100% potential of the operation of these. Wow, what does that look like? So William Branham, he called for a healing line. Dr. Summerall said there were so many people that got in the line, it went all the way around the walls of the building, out the foyer, down the sidewalk, and around the block. So many people got in line for healing. The first woman came up for healing. And he says, do you know where your husband is? She said, yes, he's at home with the children. No, he's next door with your neighbor in bed right now. And said, and if he doesn't repent, he'll be dead in 30 days. 
And he was. Dr. Summerall said that man dropped dead. Within 30 days, he dropped dead. But Dr. Summerall said you looked and three-fourths of the people got out of the line. <laughs> there wasn't hardly anyone left. Why? What you doing? What you doing? What you doing? Where you going? What you watching? What you texting? What you liking on Facebook? What you what you doing? Ah. You talk about a reverence that will come back in the church when that spirit of the world has gotten in. People don't even recognize. They think it is it is to walk in love to let the spirit of the world in. Come on. Come on. No, serious. Yeah. They call it walking in love. Yeah. 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 Can I tell you what, what you tolerate, yeah. what you have tolerance toward, you're going to have. I'm going to tell you, drug addicts can come here, alcoholics, yeah. adulterers, yeah. homosexuals, yeah. lesbians can come here and get free anytime That's they want. Right. Yeah. But I tell you what, we're dealing with power right. here. Amen. Right. We're not playing games. No. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Amen. And if you're sincere and you're genuine, I guarantee you the genuine power of God will meet you, set you free, set you free, set you free. But don't be, don't, don't be confused about this. Amen. Just because you're confused about what gender you are, I'm not. Amen. Amen. Your confusion is Amen. not my confusion, right. and I'm not playing games. Amen. Amen. And I will not let people sit in here and hold hands and say I'm walking in love. No. I won't. No, 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 no. But if you want to be free, I guarantee you, I'll be the first one to show you how to walk in that freedom. Amen. If I love you, I love you enough not to be tolerant because what's tolerated will be had. And when churches stand up and say we're mercy motivated and we're walking in love, I'm just telling you, the spirit of the world will take over their church because I'm going to tell you what love will do. Can I tell you what love will do? God is love. One day, heaven is a perfect society. Perfect. But one day, Lucifer, that's right. part of a perfect society, yeah, that's right. tried to disrupt the order of the perfect society and love yep. rose up and then bam, you're out. Yeah. Yeah. Love is not permissive toward wrongdoing. Amen. Do not confuse that love is, is permissiveness. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't, don't confuse that mercy is, means permissiveness. It does not. If you love someone, you won't let them keep going down the wrong road. You won't wink your eye at it and say, well, we're just trying to reach people. You can't reach people doing that. You can help damn people doing that, but you can't reach them doing that. God is love, and love refused to permit wrongdoing to remain in his society. Amen. Well, praise the Lord. We got one more night. And I am only on page 7 of 16. What does that mean? <laughs> Thank God for the spirit of seeing and knowing. It is a safety to our lives. It will enable us to finish our calls. One day, one day, one day we will all stand before Jesus and answer, What did you do with my plan? What did you do with my plan for your life? Yes, yes. Well, I, I tried. No, no, no. You had divine help. Yeah. You had angelic beings yeah. who are ministers yeah. for the heirs of salvation. You had a divine genius of the Holy Ghost yeah. in you. You had my word. You yeah. had my name. Yeah. What did you do with my plan yeah. for your life? We will all give an account. Yes, 
we will all answer. And he gave these divine nine manifestations of the spirit because to fin finish and fulfill our plan requires these nine manifestations. Amen. That's right. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes, it does. Amen. We cannot fulfill the fullness right. of the plan. That's right. We might fulfill a partial measure of it, right. but the fullness of it is going to require the fullness of what God offers to us. Amen. Mm -hmm. We need to start hungering for the gifts of the Spirit. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. In our lives, yes. in our churches. Yes. 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 Amen. Amen. That when pastor gets up and says something, that people that are carnal and unspiritual in a church and they go out in the foyer and say, well, I can't, I'm not going to stay in this church anymore. You know, they got no love. And all you're saying is that what the pastor said in the service, you're guilty of. If you'd gone about there and be quiet, nobody would have known. But when you go out there and start speaking against the leadership, all you're saying is that was me. Yes, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yes, that was me. Yeah. 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 Come on. And we need to realize that if the pastor gets up and says something, that, ooh, that stepped on my toes, learn the proper response. To the hungry man, every good thing is good. Yes. To the hungry man, he honors everything, whether it was what he would have chosen to eat or not. He's grateful for it. Amen. Hunger doesn't just say, I only will accept a word that's easy to hear. Anybody would, would love the church and the pastor who says, by the end of the year, you're all going to have a new home. But when a pastor gets up by the gifts of the Spirit and says, this isn't going to be happening anymore because I know what's going on with the youth or I know what's going to... I'm just telling you, I love the family too much to let you keep doing this, so we're going to be handling this. You need to say, thank God for my pastor. Thank God for my pastor. Keeps my life safe. Hunger appreciates every flow God gives the sheep. Thank God for the Holy Ghost. Pray for your pastor. Oh, Father. Oh, Father, that you would give my pastor everything the sheep need to hear. Yes. And Father, when he delivers it, I'll say thank you. I won't say I'm offended. Amen. 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 Hunger never gets offended at any food put on the plate. That's right. Amen. Seriously, you take a starving a person who grew up in a in a third world country starving and put on their plate a plate full of vegetables, they won't say I'm not eating that. They won't say it. Why? Because hunger takes what's offered it. That's right. Amen. I love the Holy Ghost. He is out for our blessing. The Holy Spirit is trying to bring profit to every That's single right. one of us. Amen. 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 He can't do anything but profit. Amen. We have to renew our minds to what profit looks yeah. like. When your pastor yeah. stands up and says, yeah. don't you marry that person, that's the Holy Spirit trying to profit you yeah. to, try to, to try to rescue you from a life of sickness and yeah. torment and heartbreak and heartache yeah. and children gone the wrong direction. Yeah. See, we have to renew our mind to what profit looks like. Profit is not just money in your pocket and healing in your body. It is your life rescued from a, from a, from a wrong direction. Hallelujah. Well, stand with me to your feet tonight. Father, we thank you. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you. We cooperate, we hunger for what you said to the prophet of God. That the great, that greater manifestation of the spirit of seeing and knowing, we say, Father, we're hungry for it. We're hungry for it. We're hungry for it. We're hungry for it. It is a rescue to our lives. It's a help to our lives. It is complete profit to our life. We only increase from it. We thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for taking the will of the Father and manifesting that in our presence. We honor you. We reverence you. We're just so grateful for you. We give you proper place in our life. 
We purpose to be sensitive to you, to yield to you. We thank you for it, Father. Now, brother Grant, get up, get the microphone, and let's go ahead. Lead us in that song again, because we say this: we're stepping in, we're stepping out. This is not just a song. This is direction for us when we leave this week of meetings. Amen. We're not just singing something we like to sing. We are we are stating some things. Amen. Go ahead, Grant. We're stepping in, we're stepping out, we're moving with the Spirit, we'll sing, we'll praise, we'll shout, we're moving on into a greater flow. singing a song. The congregation must sing this. We're, not just the preacher, we're stepping in. We're stepping out. We, every bend in the service, every way, every plan of the service, even if we're not used to it, even if it's something we've not seen before, we're going to step in. Why? Because we're not going to let the, uh, the discomfort of the flesh keep us. Now I'm talking about it's right in, when it's right in our spirits, we're going to step in. Amen. Let's sing it again. We're stepping in. We're stepping out. We're stepping out. We're moving. We're moving with the Spirit. We'll sing, we'll, we'll praise, sing, we'll, we'll shout. shout. We're we'll moving on. Everywhere he leads 
for us to step into. Amen. Hallelujah. How about this? Stephen Dufresne is preaching in the morning. And for those of you who don't know, this is Grant Dufresne, my youngest son. And uh, of course, you know, Morgie, Bubby Bear, come here. Come here. Come here. Let's look at this. Come here. Come here real quick. Come here. Nanny Cake's not in here, is she? This is Bubby. This is Bear. And you know what? The best thing you can do is get your family in the same flow. Then they'll know which way we're all headed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody before you're dismissed and say, I'm hungry. I'm hungry for the move of the Holy Ghost. And you're dismissed.